So why is it Happy Valley? What is a Happy Valley? Why is it Happy Valley? Can I, I, I've never actually asked that question, and I am generally curious. You know, Greg, this is going to sound like an asshole answer. You just know it when you're there. You know, it's oh the great, God. it's the greatest place on earth, Greg. The greatest place I always on earth. Ass- I always assumed it was because there's so many cows there frolicking in mm. the wind because there's so much, they're enjoying the creamery, they're enjoying producing the milk mm. for all of your ice cream that somehow causes brain freeze, which causes you to become mindless zombies and stuff. Mm. So that's where the happy part came from. I got that's you. just my opinion. Yeah, I gotcha. I, I, that's where I'm going with it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to All Purpose Garbage, the college football show for idiots. This is Smalls here. Idiot number one on the show. Idiot number two is not with us tonight because he decided he was cooler than me and decided to bail. So we have his two beers deep co-host, Mr. Greg Malik. Greg, how's it going tonight, man? What's going on, man? So my idiot number three, then, is that that how we're we're leaning towards this? Because I'm cool with that. I I would say... I would I wouldn't say idiot number three. I would say honorary idiot. Honorary idiot. Okay, yeah. I like that. I like mm-hmm. that. I have to earn. I have to earn the number in this case, kind of like yep. a college football team having to earn the ranking. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You're you're so you. re- you're so redshirting right now. We gotta we gotta see how you do on the practice squad, and then and then we'll makes sense. I gotta bu- I gotta bulk up in the weight room and all mm-hmm. that type stuff. You know, gotta learn the playbook a little bit more. Have to make sure that uh, I have good relationships with my position coach and stuff like that. Yeah, I got yeah. it. No, absolutely. Yeah, you got to you got to earn those stripes. Got to earn those stripes. You got to I got it. Yeah, I got you, it. You got to put the time in. Um so Greg, before we actually get started, a few housekeeping things. Um shout out to everyone that came out to the Yenzer Mob tailgate. It was a fucking blast. Hey, that shit was so so much fun. That was my first Yenzer Mob tailgate and I was blown away at how much fun it was. Like yeah, I I got there very late. I didn't get there till around six o'clock, and by the time I got there, uh, I couldn't find Dre because God only knows what the hell he was doing. Uh, I texted him. He told me he was in the middle of doing some interviews, so I didn't want to bother him. But mm. from what I saw, it looked like it was a great job. Uh, I called I called Dre on my way back home, and I just told him you did a phenomenal job. And quite frankly, he is an unsung hero here, and I cannot mm-hmm. wait for more of these to happen. Oh yeah, no, it was it was a blast. Me and Dre, we did we did some on camera stuff. Um, interviewed uh, Barstool Big Cat, which was awesome. Is he really big? He's he's big. He's so big. He's big. Now, granted, I'm small. I am small, but he's that so makes sense. Yes, it's he's so big that when uh, Deke tweeted out the picture with me and Denny standing next to him. We got a lot of, I think the, the best reply I saw, which I thought was hilarious, was uh, good on you, Big Cat, for uh, giving a shout out to all those small guys out there, in parentheses, midgets. <laughs> <laughs> so we, he dwarfed us. Like, he, 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 was, he was a big dude. Big dude. I did see the pick. I feel like he was like two of you, which oh, was yeah. really hilarious. I did not realize how big Big Cat was until I see that pick. So yeah. mind blown right there. Yeah. yeah. Tall cat. <laughs> Tall cat. Yeah. He uh Tall Cat indeed, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, but I mean, dude, Big Cat, he was awesome. Like he was like mm-hmm. it, you never really know how these guys are gonna be because I feel like they get guys coming up all the time, just like, hey, big oh, cat, sure, what's yeah. going on? And like I feel like probably some of them Maybe not a Barstool, I don't know, but I'm sure like some of these big internet personalities maybe just kind of get sick of it. Not that they're dicks, they just kind of get sick of it. They don't really want to. Right, it's it's like they're immune to it in a way too. Mm-hmm. They probably have to like you know maybe like save face or something, or they're yep. probably just like God, I'm tired of all this. But at the same yep. time though, that's awesome. Yeah, I did hear, I did hear that there is video proof of a prediction that may have gone sideways in his case. Yes, we we got the 35 to three prediction on camera. And it is glorious. It's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, he he was he was just he was a cool dude. I talked shit on Graham Mertz. That was like one of the first things that he complimented my my hoodie, and I came back and asked if Graham Mertz was the guy, and he said no. So like, 
Wow. It was a, it was a great exchange. Um, but yeah, honestly, it was just it was a good good day overall. Um, shout out Coors for making that happen. Shout out everyone at the Inzer Mob. Mm-hmm. Speaking of Coors, look at look at that. You're just repping the brand right there. You're a company product man. placement, baby. Product placement. Mm-hmm. I am a company man now. Every mm-hmm. time I go somewhere or anytime I am out with friends, I have to now get Coors. That's mm-hmm. just I'm I'm obligated to now. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah, but, and but. But thankfully, Coors is such a great product that it you is. can't go wrong with it. Yeah. It is. Yeah, Coors Banquet is one of my go-tos now. I never knew I liked Coors Banquet until until we mm-hmm. – it sounds like it's fishy timing right there that, you know, we got sponsored and, you know, that's when I started drinking Coors. Yeah. But, like, I was actually pleasantly surprised that I liked Coors Banquet as much as I did. Um, oh, Coors, Coors Banquet has the OG bottle, too. That mm-hmm. makes it pretty cool. And it's such a – it's it's like a, it's like a beer that reminds you of your grandfather. Yeah, in a way, you know, a little bit. You know, yeah. And that and that's a and that's a compliment. That mm-hmm. doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean old. It's it's vintage, if you will. Yeah, yeah. No, on the uh, on draft day, Alex uh, down at laboratory said it is the official beer of having a catch with your dad. Which is you know what? That's actually that's pretty on point now that I think mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, so shout out Coors. Appreciate everything that they're doing. Also, go donate to Movember, uh, TFTB's Movember campaign. I got my stash. Greg is cleanly shaven, or he cleanly shaved at the start of the month. I, how long have you? Is it coming in, or are you still shaving every day? No, no, God, no. Okay. I so backstory. I started doing this like back in college when it before it was Movember. Mm-hmm. I called it no shave, no no shave November. Mm-hmm. So. I would shave the day I would shave on Halloween and then I just wouldn't shave at all for November. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, when we got the alert in our group chat to say, Hey, I need to send a video to you to be able to do our November campaign. I had shaved the day before. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, well, well fuck. Okay. Yep. So I guess I'll shave whatever little bit that I could see. Cause I got to make sure I get this beautiful face on your perfectly done video i appreciate that by the way great job i must say because i didn't get a chance to tell you that yet i appreciate that had to go with mcconaughey there's no other way to go um but uh yeah (laughs) everyone go um donate to our november page if you literally just google thoughts from the bench november it's like the first thing that pops up um yep so go donate we are trying to double we are trying to double our total from last year so Mm -hmm. we appreciate every single donation possible even if it's a dollar yep absolutely shout out november just everything men's health that's what those guys are there for uh i think we're doing a pretty good job so far we'll have to check in on the on the totals but um i think that's all i have for housekeeping so greg let's get into it actually are you drinking anything tonight not tonight no i uh, i try to limit my drinking to two days a week but I, you can bet your ass tomorrow when i will be well this will drop thursday morning so mm-hmm. later tonight folks i will be enjoying many many of course beverages nice nice i didn't have course so i'm just drinking drinking my go-to jameson right now so oh the classic i am the looker randy all right <laughs> we are going to start with our recap of the weekend greg Let's do it. So, obviously, this is the big one. Michigan State goes down to Purdue. What a weird... I guess I could have seen this coming. I even think I said last week, because this was one of the games we looked at. This might be a close game, and I I think I'm on camera saying that, but I didn't think that Purdue had the this kind of firepower. So uh, David Bell is probably going to be one of the best wide receivers in next year's draft, by the way. The dude is elite. He's sneaky good. Mm. Um, This was one of those strange occurrences where it was kind of like everyone predicted Michigan State would be the team on upset alert. Mm -hmm. But yet you also kind of thought there's no way Michigan State's falling for this because everyone's saying they're on upset alert. Yeah. Yet somehow, some way, they actually did get Mm -hmm. upset Mm -hmm. this week. It was just the most bass backwards things that you could have possibly have seen come in this case but here's the thing we should have expected this yeah there's there's mad there's magic down there in purdue like yeah. jeff brom's got something going on with that team and we are just completely ignoring it somehow yeah well it it is strange because i think it, it was a few years ago they beat ohio state 
when they were a top right. five team. They beat Iowa earlier this year, top five team at home. They do it again. I don't know what it is about Jeff Brom down at Purdue playing home games against top five teams, but it, that's the thing. Iowa wasn't even close. I wouldn't even say this game was that close. Like if no, you it wasn't. It, I, I I was very surprised that they dropped forty on them. Mm-hmm. Very very surprised. Like I understand, like I understand Michigan State like may not have the greatest defense in the world, but at the same time, this is still a Big Ten game. Yeah, like 100%. you would you would have expected at least it to be somewhat low scoring. Yeah. But I mean, I, I just looking at Purdue because I have my my handy dandy ESPN app right up mm-hmm. now, just pulling this up. Right, here. their only losses were to Notre Dame and Minnesota and Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And those are those are three very good schools. Yeah, three very good programs right now too that are all ranked. So mm-hmm. it, it's not like Purdue is just sleepwalking here or anything like that. Like it's a quality team. It's mm-hmm. just you may not associate them with the higher end level of mm-hmm. the Big Ten at this point. Yeah, I think the weird thing about Purdue is they go out, they went out and beat the shit out of uh, Iowa, and then the next week they laid an egg against Wisconsin and let up like mm-hmm. thirty one points against an offense that. Let's, let's be fair. Wisconsin's offense is garbage. Graham Mertz sucks. Yes. Yes. Like I can agree with that. Um, this is one of the rare this is one of the rare years where they are not like the the power running team that we always expect mm-hmm. from a Wisconsin school. So I mean I'm not surprised that they're just not doing well. And I and I agree. For some reason they've never been able to actually get that that main go to guy for a quarterback, but there's a reason for that. Wisconsin yep. is all about is all about feeding them big boys up front to be able to not move and then opening holes for people. Yep. Yeah, and they kind of sold their soul for Graham Mertz too because they they let let Jack Cohn transfer to Notre Dame and clearly they got the wrong end of the stick there. Is like Jack Cohn is clearly outplaying Graham Mertz right now. But true, but I mean Jack, Jack Cohn's also not necessarily a difference maker. Like I feel That's, like yeah. I feel like they're they're both like they're both the same guy. If yeah. you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that that is true. Yeah, it just it's so weird that Graham Mertz came out last year and they were like, Yeah, this is the future of the program and he just he's not that good. Ugh. He's just not that good. Bad choice of words on that part. Um Aiden McConnell for Purdue, five hundred and thirty six yards through the air, three touchdowns. <laughs> oh my god. Just crazy. Oh my god. Crazy. David yeah, the, Bell the... two hundred and seventeen receiving yards. Like, I'm telling you, man, like he would like they were people that were looking at Rondell Moore last year when he got drafted, and there's definitely people that saw David Bell too. And this mm-hmm. dude's gonna get some love coming into this April. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But Sparty, I don't want to. I I just don't know about these guys. The thing is, they they're definitely a good team. I don't I don't know if I bought them being the number three team, but I mean that's just that's just my opinion. Um, clearly, yeah, I think it was. It, it was based on the resume at the point, like, mm-hmm. like, and and also we can't deny the fact too. Kenneth Walker is still a Heisman candidate. One hundred percent. That's yeah. So I I think at the time they were definitely placed perfectly, but I also think that when they faced a quality team going forward that wasn't a rival necessarily, I think this is what happens. One hundred percent. Um, moving on down to the next one, one of the best games of the weekend, really. Wake Forest goes down against North Carolina. Battle of the Sands right here. Hartman versus Howell. <laughs> and uh I thought that Hartman I thought that Wake Forest offense would just be able to run up the score at least enough that North Carolina just couldn't catch up. But dude, Sam Howell, he was he was the difference maker and it was on the ground more than through the air. That's something a lot of people don't think about with Sam Howell because his First two years at North Carolina, his rushing numbers were actually very good for mm-hmm. the type of offense that he ran. Last year was the one where he – last year was actually the year that he showed how good of a runner he could be in situations. But people don't associate that because when they look at him, and fairly or unfairly, they see Mitch Trubisky and they yep. try to like find the holes in his game. But he's a different guy altogether. Yep, 100%. Yeah, it, it is wild, too. The Sam Hartman put up over 600 yards passing – and lost the game. That's a crazy, <laughs> crazy stat. Like, just one of the weirder ones you're going to see. And, dude, UNC was down late. They were, like, late into the third quarter. They were down, like, 18 or something. Like, U- UNC is one of those schools that, like, they'll get all the preseason hype that you possibly can. 
they'll blow they'll blow it like early on and then they'll just somehow find a way to hang around at the end and make some noise and this is definitely the noise because this noise essentially knocked the acc out of any potential yeah. of getting into the cfp so yeah. thanks a lot <laughs> yeah no a yeah the acc kind of devoured itself unfortunately and wake forest was already kind of like they were saying they're they were going to be this this year's group of five team because they were saying that Wake Forest was essentially had a longer shot, even though they were undefeated going into the weekend. They had a they had a lower chance of getting into the playoff than Cincy, which is weird to think about. I think that just shows like how much respect people had for Cincy in this case, just because when you watch their games, that how well balanced of a team this was. But I think people associate Wake Forest with mediocrity for so long that therefore yeah. there's just that disconnect right there. So I'm yep. not surprised that people have that theory with, with Wake Forest, but I, but it does kind of fascinate me that they're going to favor a group of five over a power five in that case too. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. All right. You and I kind of talked about this before the before we started. <laughs> uh, Nebraska. Weird things happen when you play at Nebraska. Ne- Nebraska is also the best bad team I think I've ever seen. <laughs> Like I love that title so much. <laughs> like they're three and six, but they probably really shouldn't be three and six if you think about it. Like the teams they played, they have kept it. They, I think Ohio State lo- this week was the biggest margin of mo- margin of loss. Wow, biggest margin of loss all year, and it was nine points. Like a three and six team, you would think would be just getting blown out, and they're just they're not. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we're talking about this because I wanted to make sure that we brought this up too. Uh the Nebraska is a program that I do not understand why there is all this like why there's all this strange appeal with them. Mm-hmm. Think making them think they should be a power when in actuality they're not. So case in point, and this is what I'll say. So Nebraska kind of strikes me like you want to fit into the same mold as like Miami and USC. And like they're considered like they're considered like legacy or glamour Mm -hmm. programs in a sense. I don't agree with that because Miami has a culture of being bad boys and also has the South Florida area to recruit. USC has the glitz and glamour and also has Southern California to recruit. I look at Nebraska and the only thing that I can think of off the top of my head is, you know, the wishbone and (laughs) That's really it. Yep. And I I don't understand why there's all this like belief that Nebraska should be bigger than they are. Yeah. I just, I don't, I don't see it. And also the other thing too, Nebraska has, has a lot working against them because they do not have a great recruiting territory to work with. No. At all. No, at all. It's, it's also hard to, it's, it's the it's the fight that Iowa has every year. It's the fight that like Kansas State has every year. How do you convince these kids to go to Nebraska? You know, like but he, it's Nebraska. But I've driven through Nebraska. I've driven through the entire state of Nebraska. There's nothing <laughs> there. There's not a lot going on there. But here's the thing too, at least with Kansas State and Iowa, they're at least able to develop guys. Maybe not so much Kansas State right now, but like when Snyder was there, obviously. Mm-hmm. But all, but Iowa somehow, some way is always able to develop guys into being like either top draft picks or guys that end up playing above their head in some yep. sort of way. Yep. Nebraska, it's like there's just no there's no legacy with regards to it. They haven't had a stable program in years since Bo Pelini was probably the last one, yep. and even that was like. Yeah, they were Even nine then, and three, like, like nine and three, year in year out, and well, that's that's the thing though, they weren't happy with nine and three every year, and they were consistently like nine and three, ten and two, eight and four, that range. Right. They wanted more, and they got rid of Bo, and it has just not been the same since. No. Um. So that's so that's why I'm glad we brought this up because I saw the news that uh that Scott Frost agreed to a reworked deal where mm-hmm. he got an extension. But in turn, also let go of four assistant coaches, mm-hmm. and also had to make some concessions in his contract. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. I could see, see. That's the thing. I could see it because Harbaugh did the same thing, right? So like Harbaugh, mm-hmm. like I think it was this past year or the year before, he did the, the exact same thing. He basically cut down his contract, 
because he wasn't performing to the level that Michigan, and I'll get to Michigan at the end. Um, <laughs> um, they Harbaugh did the same thing where he, he had to make changes because it wasn't working, and he did it because that's kind of what you have to do. You, you, if you're not performing, you have to make concessions. What I'll say about Scott Frost is while their record is 3-6, and six, like I said, they're – they're not as bad as they look on paper. They're just not like they kept it close against Ohio State. So I that, and that is very impressive. I, I will definitely mm-hmm. give you that. It just it seems like Nebraska is definitely on that cusp of being a winning program year in year out with Scott Frost. It's just the problem is is that I think it took way too long for the schools as they expected to, because they thought they were getting the, you know, the golden boy that Mm -hmm. got UCF to an undefeated record and they are, but it's just, it's going to take time. Yep. Yeah. And and that's the thing that they are getting the recruits. It's, I I don't want to call the season unlucky, but it's kind of what it is. If you really look at it, like a lot of, they should have beaten Michigan state early. They didn't. And like they were, they have some really good, I mean, they kept now granted me and Deke are the biggest Opponents of the uh, of the train saying uh, that Oklahoma are frauds. Like Oklahoma, I think are the <laughs> biggest frauds in college football. Period. But having said that, they still kept it close against an Oklahoma team that was far more talented than they were. And I don't. It'd be it'd be hard to it'd be hard to swallow firing the guy that is in every single game that just doesn't get the breaks. I'm not saying that. He's the guy. He might not be the guy. But after the year that they have had, at least in my opinion, after the year they've had, it's hard to fire him. As bad as that sounds. That that and I also don't think Nebraska or anyone at Nebraska wants to go through another rebuilding cycle yep. because they'll be right back to where they were. So yep. they might as well and I'm that's why I'm a big proponent of giving like coaches four or five years. Mm-hmm. 100%. Give them time, see how they well, and if they don't perform, then let them go. Yep, 100%. That's that's where we're at there, yeah. Yeah, and another another thing, too. Nebraska was, like, one of the best programs in the nation for, like, two decades. Like, 80s and 90s, they were it. You know, like, mm-hmm. ton, like at least, I know it was multiple national championships. I don't know how many, but Nebraska, they have the pedigree, or at least they did. I don't, I don't think they do anymore, but... Um, they at least had it, and they were on top for a while. So I kind of get it, but it's also it's the fucking worst state in the country. So like, it's hard to even <laughs> convince people to go there. So yeah, I, I would find it very difficult to want to leave my state to go to Nebraska for any reason. Yeah, unless I have a affinity for corn. Big corn. Yeah, I'm not a big corn. I mean, big I corn. like corn, not enough to move move to Nebraska though. Um, I'm a bit, I'm a big corn guy actually. Yeah, passes right through me. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, A and M. So I think everyone, including myself, counted A and M out after that game against Arkansas, and then I, they lost the next week too. A and M all of a sudden looks really good, and Zach Zach Calzada just confuses the fuck out of me. I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. He looks like a he looks like a 17 year old out there but he, he gets it done. And that's the thing. He wasn't even that good this game. Like they had, they had, I think they scored one touchdown and it was a defense. It was a defensive touchdown fumble return. Mm-hmm. So like, but you look at the score, they just, their defense is so fucking good that, and again, Bo Nix on the road sucks. So like I was, I was almost making, I was making the turn and you can, Deke, Deke can, he can confirm this. I was convincing myself that maybe Bo Nix me got over the hump and he was actually good now Ooh. i was convincing myself that that was the case and i picked auburn or no i think i picked a&m but i was like i think i think auburn might be coming around and bo Nix might be coming around but i forgot that he just can't win on the road period bo Nix is essentially the opposite of sam howell in this case and i think yep. that's where the correlation comes because both of them started as true freshmen Bo Nix started as a true freshman in SEC power, so you immediately thought that somehow, some way, he was going to grow and he was going to be that elite level guy that he is. There's a reason why he is right now looked at as a seventh round draft prospect. Yep. No growing whatsoever. Yeah. None that's, whatsoever. Well, he makes like Manziel plays sometimes, like, and I, that might just be luck. I don't know. He, 
it almost seems like it is, but he has games where he just goes off. But then, like, sometimes mm-hmm. he just doesn't. And maybe that's a, more of a testament to A&M's defense, which is fucking incredible. They're more of a bend-don't-break defense because um, they give up the yards, but they don't. they're second in the nation in defensive scoring. So, like, they give up the mm-hmm. second fewest points in the nation. But, I don't know. It just, I, I, Bo Nix fooled me, man. And they <laughs> lied to me. Well, let's also, well, let's also give credit to, I'm going to give credit to A&M real quick. Because coming into this year, we were led to believe this is one of the most talented teams in the country. Mm-hmm. Just from the ridiculous, the ridiculous amount of just legit prospects everywhere. Isaiah Spiller, DeMarvin Leal, mm-hmm. um, and I'm, uh, I'm skating names. Uh, Jay Sternberger, yep. for God's sake, is going to be a. I think will be a very good tight end mm-hmm. in the NFL. But they have they have talent all over that. They have talent all over that place. So yep. I think it's just you had to survive that early hiccup at first because Arkansas was hot at the beginning of the year, and then Bama just like swatted them like a fly, and now they're yep. just like middling. So yep. I think I think they're okay. What I was surprised to remember, and this is something that I didn't even realize either, like if Bama loses one more game, AM goes to Atlanta if they run the table. Yep. Yep. That's, Which would that's be something insane. that I didn't I didn't even consider that whatsoever. But like if that's the case that could happen, I really hope there is some bullshit that happens where Bama still gets in the CFP. Yep. You watch. You watch. It'll still happen. Oh, I know. Trust me, I've watched mm-hmm. college football long enough to know that that's exactly what's going to happen. I know that's mm-hmm. going to happen. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I I don't know if AM's back per se, but I will say that Auburn fooled me. So I'll leave. I'll leave. I think it's. That. I think. I think it's more of the latter than the yep. than the definite idea on that one. But yep. yeah. Um. All right. I'm. This year, I'm the biggest Cincy fan on earth because if it's not going to happen this year, it's not going to happen, period, and unless right. we change the playoff system. And everything that Cincy needs to have happen has happened. For the most mm-hmm. part, everything they need, it's it's happened. But they, they're not doing themselves any favors because they are the one team that needs style points, and they're just they're not doing it. Against a three and now three and six Tulsa team, they should have smoked these guys at home, but they just they didn't. They it came down to a fourth, a fourth and goal fumble at the at the goal line, and that's how the game ended. Like, if you're trying to get into convince people you should be in the playoff, you have to you have to be better than this. I know it's unfair, but like you you just have to be better than this. There's a reason why UTSA is nine and zero, and they just now got into the CFP rankings this week. Yep. Yeah, you know, like it's just it, it's a it's a sad thing to admit, but that's just how it's going to be. No matter any poll that we can talk about it, and all of them are going to put Cincinnati high because they deserve it. But that committee, for some for some reason, just will never buy a Group of Five school as a top tier talent unless they are blowing fools out of the water yep. in some sort of way. And I don't know. If it's something along the line where Cincinnati felt the weight, felt the weight of the world on them or something. I mean, game days in town, yep. you know, you got everything possibly to happen. You have a lot to lose. If you do end up losing, teams are going to give you their best shot and all that. But I, I'm still not giving up on the Cincy team. Obviously, it's just I do agree with you that they. This is the school that needs to put up Alabama performances, mm-hmm. yep. essentially. Yep. And Bama's doing it against SEC teams that are recruiting five-star prospects all the time. Cincy has to do this against guys that are barely getting D1 level commits, honestly. Unfortunately, like it, that's just the thing. Like they're they are playing lower competition. Now I'll get to the playoff committee here in a here in a sec, but like mm-hmm. they they They've done everything right, and th- what happens on the field should matter. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, they've had two weeks where they go down to the wire against teams that, frankly, they just shouldn't be going down the wire against. And if you're trying to convince a committee of biased pieces of shit that you deserve to be in the playoff, you need you just you need to help yourself a little more than they are. I, and it's not fair. It, it, it isn't fair at all. 
because I firmly I firmly believe that the American is a better conference than the Big Twelve. I will go to my grave saying that. I, I I would agree with you on that one, especially because the Big Twelve I feel like gets way too much hype every single year, and yep. it's just and it's a mess. I'm looking at the rest of since he's schedule right now. They play South Florida on the road next week. Uh, sorry, this coming week, and their South Florida is two and seven. Mm-hmm. Then they go home against SMU. That's the big one. That's a big one. SMU seven and two on the year. They have a very good quarterback to be able to work with. So that's gonna be their big test. And then they close out the season against East Carolina. Yep. So. If they, I feel, personally feel like if they can have a convincing win against SMU in some sort of way, I think that will go a long way to at least solidify their spot in the top four in some sort of way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. They still just, they need to be better though. I, that, it sucks to say they just, they need to be better. And like I said, I'll get to the playoff here in a sec, but like you need to be, you need to be, the playoff committee into submission and make make them put you in. And right now, that they just haven't done it. As shitty as it is to say, they just haven't done it. So mm-hmm. I do now. Thankfully, though, I do think that they will find their way in there. It's just it's gonna have to take a little bit of uh, just some yeah man, 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 maneuvering, you know, yep. finagling, if you will. If mm-hmm. you want. Yeah, yeah. All right, and then speaking of of the uh, committee, Alabama is not the no- second best team in, in the country. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. There's no way. You can't convince me that they're the second best team in the country. I, granted, it's hard to pick a- anyone after Georgia. It's hard to figure out how those rankings should be. But I can tell you one thing. Alabama is not the second best team in the country. LSU is not a team that you should only beat 20 to 14. Like, it, you can't convince me that these guys are the are the second best team in the country. There's just no, there's no way. I texted a friend of mine uh, down in Louisiana on Saturday, and uh, I told him Godspeed to you because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was expecting – I thought for sure he was going to black out after having to sit through that game. But I would bet your money that he thought that they'd be in it at some point. So, yep. hey, yep. bless them on that. But, yep. yeah, the – yeah, there were definitely games that Bama had this year that looked like they deserved to be the second best team. They decimated Arkansas, they decimated Tennessee, and there were definitely those moments that you get there at that point. But for a team like LSU, that you basically have the head coach that got you a national championship coming in as your swan song, and you do not have the type of talent that is able to compete on the level of Bama in this case. You should be blowing teams out like this. Essentially, yeah. honestly, I would compare Bama not destroying LSU to Cincy not destroying Tulsa in the mm-hmm. same light, mm-hmm. if you will. Yep, I agree with that. Well, I think the stat that really screams, you know, that really reinforces my point here is, Greg, do you know how many yards Bama had on the ground? I do not, no. I'll give you a hint. It's single digits. For a, for a game total. Six yards. Are you serious? Six yards on the ground. That's not the second best team in the country. How the hell? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Since when the <laughs> fuck did Alabama become a air raid team all of a sudden? Exactly. Shit. Exactly. And that's, I don't even think Bryce Young had like an incredible game. Like he just, he, he, he was the reason that they even won. They can't run the ball. Their their offensive line sucks. At least right now, it they have, sucks. They Brian Robinson is not a power back like they're used to. He's definitely a change of he's he's a change of pace type of guy that can make things work. But he's not the type of guy that will go in between the tackles on that one. Yep. They have an incredible left tackle, but the rest of their line, I agree, is a work in progress. So. Mm-hmm. But but damn, like that is very un Alabama like right yep. there. So there's if you try doing that against Georgia, yep. this might George Georgia's beating them. Yep, hundred percent. Like they have to at this point. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. That's why I just I don't buy it. I don't I don't buy it for, for a fucking second. And piggybacking off of that, we'll hit hit up our rankings. So I got this week I put up both rankings because I think the playoff rankings are a sham. So I had to put both in there. Um, like I said, Alabama is not the number two team in the country. 
I went into it last week. The reason I don't think that they are was because if you look further down the list, and it's not as much the case this week, but last week they were the number two team in the country, and the teams that were ranked that really should, shouldn't should have been were, I think it was Kentucky and Mississippi State. Mississippi mm-hmm. State was th- like three and three last week, but they put them in there to justify Bama being number two. And I heard Joe Klatt talk about this. Um, the, the committee is building the rankings the wrong way. They're looking, they're building the top four and then deciding the rest of it based on that. Instead of building it from the bottom, saying like, okay, these are the teams that are kind of in the mix, and then you get into like top 15, top 20, and then up to the top four. They justify putting Bama at the top based on what's below them. That's bullshit. Like that's yeah, just... that's 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 not fair. Um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with you about how they should build the list that way because I am a believer that the easiest way to do it is to start with who you think is the best team in the country, which is clearly Georgia, and then just kind of going down there. But mm-hmm. I uh, I do see the reasoning in this case too that trying to justify Bama being number two by having all these other teams in there is kind of bullshit. Yep. Having said that, I look at the rest of the CFP. I am kind of fascinated by the number of uh, Big Ten schools that are still available in this because mm-hmm. it really kind of speaks to how good of depth the Big Ten has this year mm-hmm. that we probably did not expect in this case. Yep. Purdue getting ranked is awesome yep. to me because mm-hmm. they deserve it even at six and three. Yep. The one, th- uh, the one thing I will say, though, Michigan – so I would say that overall, they, at the very least, I wouldn't even. I'm not even going to say that. Uh, sometimes you can give the committee credit, really, over the last two weeks for at least staying true to the fact that if a team beats another team, they are ranked above the team they beat. Oregon, Ohio State is a good example of that. Michigan, Michigan State doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make any sense. The- the logic, and I saw it get, and I saw them talk about it yesterday. The same, same reason that they kept saying was that when they looked at it, Michigan was the more complete team. Yeah, but the first words out of the playoff, uh, the committee chair's mouth, uh, I think he's the Iowa AD. He's one of the ADs out there. Um, yeah. His reasoning was, well, a week ago, Michigan State beat Michigan, and now Michigan State lost. That was that was the reason. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like you're telling me that an on-field result, it, like that's not even a real explanation. Like an on-field result yeah. should matter. And I just don't. Now, granted, I don't think that Michigan's a bad team. I don't think that they should be ranked above Michigan State. Period. Um. Just like, and I think that Oklahoma and Notre Dame are both frauds, but I don't think that Michigan should be ranked above either of those teams either. Like, if I'm being honest, but yeah. So, so the logic, the logic is sound in this case because Michigan State lost, Oregon deserved to pass them, Ohio State deserved to pass them, and Cincinnati deserved to pass them. But trying to make the argument that Michigan was better because they're a more complete team is not a sound argument because if they are still a more complete team, Michigan State by and large is also a more complete team because they beat a complete team. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, so the, the logic is, makes no sense whatsoever, but we have to we have to remember too that all of these CFP rankings that are coming out like with a month left to go, I feel like is just fodder and it's just to like yep. get us talking. It doesn't actually mean anything. Yep. Yep. Well, yeah. And I, th- so it, I just think the committee, they, they contradict themselves all the time. And mm-hmm. that's just example. Number one, uh, if they're saying that Michigan is a more complete team than Michigan state, I would argue that Ohio State is a much more complete team than Alabama this year. Mm-hmm. That's that's absolutely fair. Um, uh, and, and another thing, and again, this is going to sound biased, but you're telling me that Wisconsin and Auburn are better teams than Penn State and deserve to be ranked that much higher. You know what? I I'm going to be honest with you. They do not. 
Yeah. They absolutely do not. Penn State had one really bad loss, mm-hmm. which was the nine overtime was game against it was Illinois. Bad. It was it was bad. It mm-hmm. was bad. I'll give you that. But it's not like Wisconsin or Auburn did anything to deserve being in that race right here. Like yeah. I'm looking at I, I'm looking at the CFP top twenty five. And first off, I find it hilarious that after Oregon, the only other Pac twelve school in there is Utah. Yep. That's yeah. hilarious to me. Yeah. Just pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, like I'm looking at that middle group right there. Like I can make a case for certain schools being there. Like NC State definitely I think deserves it. Mm-hmm. I think Ole Miss has a right to deserve to be there too. But I could very easily make a case for Auburn not being in it, especially after that horrible performance mm-hmm. there. Yep. I yeah. just Yeah, and if you want to rank them fine, but I'm just it, it's like don't contradict yourself. Like there are better teams than some of the teams that you're putting in your top 25. And I know Penn state Mm -hmm. was just an example of that. And yeah, I'm going to sound biased, but that's just the one that I know. Like we beat Wisconsin and we beat Auburn and we beat Wisconsin on the road. Like, like there, it just doesn't even last week. Like, like I said, Mississippi state shouldn't have been ranked period, but they were at 17 and Penn state wasn't in the top 25. And there are other teams too. Like I, I think it. I know Coastal lost to App State, but like they are treating that loss so like it was just the worst thing ever. I think Coastal d- at least deserves to get a look, and they're just they're not. And there are a few other teams too that just aren't getting a look at all. Right, Houston. That's another yeah. one. Like, mm-hmm. I I honestly am surprised UTSA is even in the CFP right. They just they I, deserve I it. For sure. They do deserve it, and it's and it, and it just kind of shows you how big of a difference like most smart college football experts view them versus mm-hmm. the committee. Mm-hmm. Like see that difference on looking at this, like the yep. AP has them at 15 and mm-hmm. the CFP has them at 23. Yep. That's an absurd difference right there. When you put it in the grand scheme of things, hundred percent. Um, I got to ask you about Pitt. So mm-hmm. for, for the people out there that maybe don't know, Greg, if you can't tell he's a pit guy. Cause he's got, got the sign behind him. Um, so I'm a Penn State Penn State guy. He's a Pitt guy. Talk to me about Pitt, because frankly, I fucking love Pitt. Th- this is a fun Pitt team. It just sucks that they have Pitt losses, and that's not me just trying to be a dick. They just have very Pitt losses. They do. I was at both those losses, and yeah. it, it 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 stings. It stings me. Um, the Western Michigan game. I'm. I'm kind of not surprised it happened. Uh, it, it, there's usually some sort of beginning of the season that it's bound to happen. The Miami game pissed me off a lot because Miami is one of those schools that will, that they'll get pre it's the same thing as North Carolina. They'll get preseason hype to start off with. They'll get destroyed at the beginning and then they'll just hang around at yep. the end. And especially because I think they're on their third quarterback yep. at this rate too, which is hilarious. And I'm still, I am very annoyed about that damn safety call that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. I am yeah, that was, going to go. Y'all got robbed. Robbed. We got robbed. <laughs> we got robbed on that call. We would have gotten the safety, and then we would have gotten the ball back with time to spare to at least kick a game-winning field goal yep. in the good side of Heinz Field where the wind mm-hmm. wasn't that bad. So mm-hmm. I digress on that one. I got – and thankfully – Thankfully, the the way that this turned it around in my case was that I watched that Duke game this past weekend, and I saw Kenny Pickett absolutely destroy that Duke team. Yep. So, yep. I'm I'm okay with it. I can respect the fact that even though like we got some love early on where they said they had a shot to get into the CFP, I knew it wasn't did. realistic. Be- I didn't think it was realistic at the time just because I, I was doing the math and I kind of thought, okay, one SEC school will get in, one Big Ten school will get in, Cincinnati will get in, and then I'm pretty sure they won't get as high of a ranking. But mm-hmm. I still think that they will – they have a very good shot to win the ACC. Their big game is going to be next week against Virginia. Virginia yep. is a school that right now – right now I believe they are tied – because of um, and Virginia hasn't played an ACC game in three weeks, so this is going to be the game that decides it for them. If they beat Virginia, they essentially clinch the tiebreaker, which means they can go into Syracuse the following week with the ACC title. They'll probably play. If I were a betting man, I would say they'll probably end up playing NC State. Yep. Yep. And I, I, and, I agree with that. and I'm I'm a big NC State 
guy. I mm-hmm. love the way Dave Doran has built that program, and I think it's going to be a great football game. But it's, but yeah, feels good. Yeah, yeah. Feel, feels feels good. And it took and it took a year for Clemson to be bad for it to yeah. happen. So I'm totally okay with it. Yeah, I I said it on Twitter. Um, I even as a Penn State guy before the Miami loss, I was genuinely happy for Pitt fans because. You guys deserved at least, well, maybe looking back at it, maybe not because of the Miami game. However, <laughs> yeah, like, however, I firmly believe that they should have been getting more hype because that's a good team. It's good defense. I sneaky good defense, in my opinion. Um, and mm-hmm. Kenny Pickett is just fucking cool. Kenny Pickett is just he is. awesome. He <laughs> like, really is. like he really it feels is. like he's and been it, there forever, but like he's just fucking cool. And yeah, speaking of that defense real quick, remember the name Damari Mathis. He's going to mm-hmm. be a top three-round corner, and Servasier Dennis is going to be a stud next year. Yep. You mark my words on that one. Mm-hmm. But I think Kenny Pickett, and this is one of those rare things that happens when you can get a, a quarterback who knows your offense well enough and can execute it well enough and is staying healthy yep. to the point – you're getting no issues right there. It's just, it's all aligning perfectly. And I'm enjoying this because I know next year we're in for some shit because I have no idea if it's going to be Patty. I don't know if it's going to be Bevel. I don't know if yep. it's going to be Yellen. I don't know if it's going to be any other guys. But right now I'm just kind of savoring this. I'm savoring the national recognition that Kenny Pickett's getting, and I'm quite happy. There's a very good chance. And I, and, and I don't, and I know that I kind of like try to talk into existence. I don't know if I'm necessarily like, ready to fully commit to it yet but there is a very good chance that he could win the heisman this year i i agree he has with a you very good shot yeah i th- i think the heisman race this year kind of sucks if i'm being honest and it oh yeah it goes hand in hand with the fact that it's a weak draft year yep. for skill guys and mm-hmm. quarterbacks because mm-hmm. of that there's no one that's like the there's no sexy fix Yep. Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't have Lamar or Baker or any mm-hmm. of these other guys that are just taking the world by storm. You don't really have those guys. But Kenny Pickett kind of was. And, like, like Bryce Young, I just – I have a feeling he, I have a feeling he's going to win, and that would suck because, like, not that he's been bad. Mm-hmm. He's been good. It's just he's not, like, a Heisman winner, you know? like No, he's not. Um, And, like – I watch C.J. Stroud. I don't think that C.J. Stroud is a Heisman winner because he just doesn't have that. Like, you see Justin Fields get in there, and he was a serious Heisman contender because you you go into the game thinking that you can win every game with Justin Fields. He is that confident. C.J. Stroud doesn't have that. Um, and you see all these other guys falling down the Heisman board, and Kenny Pickett, I sincerely believe, should win the Heisman or at least at least go into it Head to head against Kenneth Walker, like I firmly believe that. Yeah, uh, this is definitely an unsexy year. I will give you that. I find it very hard to believe that anyone who's voting in the Heisman race is going to go against a guy who has a twenty-six to three touchdown interception ratio yep. in a Power Five school. That yep. has to like has to count for some something. Sort of credence right there yep. has to count for something. And I also am a big believer too that like when you really think of the Heisman. I think one of the main tags on this one is that he has to be the difference maker. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. he is essentially, it is literally the MVP of college football. It's if you take this guy out, they are massive difference makers in that case. So, and that's why CJ Stroud isn't absolutely considered it because he's not a Justin Fields level difference maker. If you took Justin Fields out of that team, it's night and day in that one. So, I, I get the logic on that, but yeah, yep. it's it's going to be an interesting last few weeks. They got North Carolina tonight, so we'll see yep. how this goes because North Carolina is usually one of those schools that I have no idea what the hell to expect from. <laughs> yeah. But that's the least I can say. Yeah. Are they playing tonight? They're not playing tonight, are they? Well, tonight when this drops on Tomorrow. Thursday, it'll gotcha. be dropping tonight. Thursday. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. I'm, in yeah. the, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking ahead, but mm-hmm. thinking ahead. Yeah. I uh, If... If Penn State and Pitt renewed had extended the rivalry a few more, few more years, I think this year would be just an, an incredible game. It would there be so fun. There was a shot. 
I was seeing bowl projections earlier where they could have played, played each other in the Peach Bowl. That that would be so much fun. Like that would be I, so I much agree. fun. Like I agree. Because man, it, our defense against Kenny Pickett, like I don't know who wins because our secondary is, I think, one of the best in the nation. And like Kenny Pickett is big Jaquan Brisker guy. Yeah, big J- Jaquan Brisker dude, guy. Dude, Brisker's oh. a dog. Brisker's a mm-hmm. dog. Um, mm-hmm. and we got guys up front to, like Arnold uh, Evacati. Dog, like we have some dogs on defense, and I think Sean Clifford can at least hold his own. But like, dude, seeing our defense go up against Kenny Pickett, that would be like prime time football. That would be so much is, fucking fun to watch. Like, is Sean Clifford a uh, Todd Blackledge two point oh? Mmm, mmm. That's the first time I've ever heard that question. I or is that, or is that giving, or is that giving too much credit to Sean Clifford because I think Blackledge that, won a won a won a national championship? I think that I think yeah, I think that might be it. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough question because Clifford right now he is not a bad quarterback by any stretch of the, the imagination. Illinois, you can put a little, I would put a little asterisk next to it because he was hurt. He shouldn't have been mm-hmm. playing in that game, and that's a, a story for another day. I already went on a rant about that. He shouldn't have been playing that game. Yeah. Um. But he's not. He is probably one of the most improved players in the country, and you can see it because he is good. Like that's a that's a great question. I'm gonna have to think about that one, Greg. <laughs> yeah, De- Deke Deke and I have always talked about with quarterbacks is that there's two different types of quarterbacks. There's ones that will do everything in their power to not lose a game, and there's ones that will do everything in their power to try to win the game. Sean yeah. Clifford strikes me as the type of quarterback that will do everything in his power to not lose the game. I would argue that every year except for this year, I would agree. This year, it feels a little different. This year, okay. So, and I'm not hating, and I'm not hating on yep. that because there's there's quarterbacks that are very good that have that same mindset. And there's yep. nothing wrong with that, yep. but it's just it's, yep. it's just the vibe. So it, it's an, he's not Trace McSorley. Let's put it that way. Trace would go out. <laughs> oh and, my god. Well, be honest though. Trace was a, more of a gamer than Clifford he, is. He he balled. I will give you yep. that. Trace McSorley did everything in his power to ball. So yep. that's all I could ask yep. for. He was one. a game. He won games that he shouldn't have. Like and I, I'll for, fully admit to that. But he he was a gamer. Um. All right. Let's move on. CFP rankings let's are a sham. It. All right. Greg. Let's do it. Got? All right, so I steal my brother's login to be an athletic subscriber, as do most people, obviously. And Dane Brugler, who is their resident, their resident, uh, Mel Kuyper, their NFL draft expert, released his top 50 midseason prospect reports this past week. And surprise, surprise, for the most part, and this is something that has probably been talked about on the show ad nauseum by Deke at this point, this is not a sexy draft class at all. Uh, The draft is very much aligned with defensive linemen, corners, offensive line, but there's a lot of guys in here that I think you really need to remember their names because they are guys that are going to be studs at the next level. First one that I'm going to say, and this goes back to my thing where I said that I was a big NC State guy, Ikem Ikwanu. You might not recognize that name, but this dude is going to be an elite level guard in the NFL sometime next year. The guy mauls over people. If you watch any NC State game, Dave Doran does not do anything sexy with that offense. They are built essentially like a pro style offense, and this dude sticks out like no other. He runs over people and he is going to be a stud he's going to get some love moving forward and he is right now a top 10 guy another one that i'm going to bring up too this is a small school guy that's been getting some love lately trevor penning offensive tackle from northern iowa you may not see stuff like this come up from small school prospects that are going to get love like this but this is such a great offensive line class in general that the fact that his name is even being brought up speaks volumes to this case too, because there's some great offensive linemen that are still left on this case that are below them right there. But this dude has somehow found a way to be able to sneak up in this, in this instance, to be able to start getting some love. And he's another name to be watching out for. One of my favorite players in this class, Jordan Davis, the nose tackle from Georgia, 
this dude's going to be a top 15 pick at some point. And this leads into the point that that Georgia defense is one of the best defenses we have ever seen in college football. And this dude is the heart and soul of that unit. I'm trying to put into ways that I can explain to him what he represents. He essentially can be a nose tackle or he can be an inside presence. He's not going to be like an Aaron Donald level type guy, but he's definitely a Fletcher Cox guy. He's the guy that will essentially bulldoze people. He will plug holes if you want. He will get your occasional sack, but he's also the guy that will take on two defenders. So you can line up your outside linebackers to get that point. He's a guy that will plug the middle. He will do a great job for you. And I think he's another guy that is going to be a stud. One of my favorite players in this class, aside from David Bell, is another wide receiver, and I'm a big fan of him, Traylon Burks from Arkansas. If you watch that game against Texas A&M, and we brought this up previously, Traylon Burks was all over the field in that game. He sticks out like a sore thumb as an offensive weapon for Arkansas. He is Arkansas's best player, and he's definitely someone that is going to do dirty work in the NFL. This wide receiver class is very fascinating. There's not a guy that is essentially on a Jamar Chase or Devontae Smith level, but it's still a deep class that guy that you are going to find guys that are going to be studs in the NFL in some sort of way. But I would not necessarily give someone like a top five overall pick. And there's guys that have kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit. You know, Olave and Wilson haven't really like shown out. Uh, Drake London is going to be hurt. I'm a big Jahan Dotson fan. I'm going to throw yep. that out there for you, nice. Smalls. Don't worry nice. on that. Yeah, he's going to be a guy that's also going to be very good at the next level. But that's just kind of like a, a, a mini idea of what to expect that's the next level in this case, but and I'm going to save the best for last in this one. And I was going to text Deacon Dre this, but I decided he to show this on here if they actually do watch this. My favorite player in this entire class, and I really hope somehow, some way that uh, my beloved Steelers end up drafting him. I want Devin Lloyd from Utah mm. in the worst possible way. This guy, if you watch any Utah games. He is everywhere and anywhere for this guy. And when you look at middle linebackers, essentially, middle linebackers, especially in today's age, you want someone that's going to be able to cover tight ends and be able to cover wide receivers down the middle. But you also want to be able to have the athletic ability to still be a blitzer. This guy is everything. And he also has the old school mentality of being a run stopping linebacker that you could potentially want. He is exactly what they try to get with Devin Bush, but Bush has not necessarily lived up to that potential just yet. I still say he's young enough to be able to do some work, but I would love if they plug Devin Lloyd into this defense, and I think he will be a star at the next level. So that's my list. Nice. Folks. Nice. Um, so I do want to point out, this is the College Football Show for Idiots. I should have prefaced this. You're one of the smartest guys I know that can talk about football, so you're not really an idiot. So I appreciate you coming on because most of the time me and Deke just make jokes about like making comparisons between Oklahoma and the high school girlfriend that always cheats on you. So like, I'm glad well. that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not you're not wrong. Like, let's be clear yeah. about that. It is kind of, it is bullshit that somehow, some way, that Oklahoma is essentially going to, you know, sleep with the flag twirl team, yep. flag twirl team, and then all of a sudden is going to get like the title of king of the ladies, man. Like, let's mm -hmm. be real. Hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So I appreciate that insight. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, congrats for coming on and stealing the show with your actual knowledge of the game. Um, Jahan Dotson. I try. I appreciate the shout out for Jahan Dotson because that, if I'm being honest, he really is the best Penn State receiver I've ever seen. I That's think he something. has. I think Jahan Dotson has a crush on the end zone mm -hmm. and always wants to get there. Yep, and he looks. It it's makes like, it, he makes it look so easy doing it too. It's you know what, and here's and here's something that I I'm gonna I'm gonna make you feel I'm gonna make you feel really good. Mm -hmm. Jahan Jahan Dotson is like has some has some Antonio Brown prime looks mm. to him in terms of his route running. Yeah, no, yeah, he did he, and he that's the thing he makes it look so easy. Like he's just it's seamless, and you know, you, 
it's hard to I think he'll be a success in the NFL. I can't obviously can't tell, but like people were kind of questioning him coming back to Penn State uh for his senior year. I think he's only done himself favors by doing that. Like yeah, I think if Jahan Dawson goes so, goes somewhere to pair with a young quarterback, like if he goes somewhere like uh, Chicago to be with Justin mm-hmm. Fields, I think that would be elite. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he goes to like the Patriots with Mac Jones, I think that would be a great pickup yep. too. Yep. If he could like, because here's the thing, Jahan Dawson is essentially, he's not the type of guy that's going to be your deep threat type of receiver. He's very much going to be the guy that's going to go like middle cross routes. He's going to be mm-hmm. a guy that you're going to do screen passes with, but he's going to be so good at exploiting the holes in your defense that it's going mm-hmm. to find ways to make it work. And that's yep. exactly the type of safety net that a young quarterback needs yep. to work with. Greg, I'm going to be honest. I did not think that I was going to have you on and we would be paying each other so many, com- so many compliments about each other's team. This probably is awesome. because I'm not drink. It's probably because I'm not drinking. So okay. that's probably that's where we're well, at. Well, I am. Yeah. I get nice when I drink. So, <laughs> mm. That's a great quality to have, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are going to go to the Mike Leach Ward. He couldn't give me a shark in head, so I got a t-shirt. All right. This week's Mike Leach Award goes to Mike Leach. Um, so if you, guys, if you guys did not see this, uh, Mississippi State had kind of a rough time on uh, special teams this week. 0 for 3 on field goals. Um, one of them was, what was it? A 26 yarder, 23 yarder. Sorry. And after the game, Leach came out and he had this quote. I love how he starts us to announce this. There's an open trial on our campus for kickers. Anyone that wants to kick on or walk on and kick at Mississippi state will hold a tryout. Anytime you can get over to our building. This is so peak leech. It's not even funny. This is why he's my dad. Cause like this guy is just a quote factory. Like he is just a quote machine. Amazingly enough, I do remember this. I saw it on like a ESP. It was on like my ESPN app the following morning on my headlines, and it was the mm-hmm. very last one at the bottom. Like you know how like the last headline is like yep. some obscure sport that just is randomly talked yep. about or anything but apparently it was mike leach discussing field goal kicking yep. which is hilarious yep hey, he's just he's just so funny and like i just i love that he trolls his players sometimes and it's it's in like kind of a demeaning way but it always seems to work because i don't greg do you remember the fat girlfriends speech the fat little yes. girlfriends yes. yep Yes. Peak Leach. This is along the same lines. Hey, <laughs> if you just want to come try kicking for us, we'll have a tryout for you because our guys suck that bad. Like, they had two <laughs> kickers. Like, it, granted, the the one at the end, it was for a game time field goal, and the kid was a freshman. But right. if you go 0 for 3, missing a 23-yarder, eh, there might be someone else, someone else better out there. It's just crazy that they're in an SEC school and, and – they're having this conversation like and on scholarship by the way yeah and on scholarship by the way yeah it's just it's so funny to me leech is just so i've said this before i I was very concerned about mike leach moving from the pac-12 to the sec in all seriousness because i didn't think that his i didn't think his style would mesh well down there he's doing a decent job yeah, and Mississippi State hasn't like lit the world on fire or anything. But at mm-hmm. the same time, though, like a- at least he kind of has like that. He has that good old boy mentality that I yep. think resonates well with the folks down there. Absolutely. Yeah, I've said this before. If if Jimmy ever decides to leave Penn State, and it'll probably happen eventually, um, for a multitude of reasons that I won't get into right now. He probably, in some respects, he probably should leave. Um, he, I would take Mike Leach in a heartbeat, and not because I think we'd be a great football team. I think at the very least, it would provide some entertainment and happiness into my life and the Penn State fan base's life. Like, Add some happiness to Happy Valley. That's a noble concept, man. Exactly. But Leach is a fucking legend. I that's why I named it the Mike Leach Award. He's a quote he's a quote machine. Um Can you imagine if they put him on TV once he retires? Dude, yeah. I the one of the first articles I wrote for Thoughts from the Bench was give Mike Leach a TED talk. 
Because that would be the most oh, ele- <laughs> that would be the most electric TED talk of all time. Um, I don't even know. I don't know if I would be inspired or if I would just come confused. out of that just feeling confused. A little. Or I think it'd be a just... little bit of everything. You'd be you'd be happy. You'd be sad. You'd be inspired. You'd be confused. It would literally just be a mixed bag of what did I just watch? I don't know, but I loved every second of it. So it's like getting high without having to do the work. Yep. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Um. All right, big games this week. So, you are the honorary picker this week. You're gonna take some credit for Deke and his record. Greg, I want to ask you: Are you impressed by our records? Because me and Deke feel pretty fucking good about how we've picked so far this year. Having a winner. I mean. I mean, if you guys are going the money line the entire way, I mean, technically yep. you're in the green. You're in the, or sorry, you're in the black, technically. Yeah. So, 100%. Yeah. I mean, we feel, hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. We feel pretty good. Uh, just anything above 500. I mean, we're going to feel pretty good about that. Um, Okay. So, we're going to start Oklahoma Baylor. Greg, I think this is the week. This is the week that Oklahoma gets exposed for the fraud that they are because Baylor's offense is legit. <laughs> They're playing at home. This is the week. I'm going Baylor. I, if, so here's my reasoning. If Baylor hadn't laid an egg last week against TCU, this would have been a much bigger game going into this as well. However, having said that though, I think them laying an egg against TCU was the best thing that could have happened to them because Bingo. they're coming into the situation. They're coming into this situation with Oklahoma unsuspecting. And by the way, bet the over in this game. Oh Just yeah, throwing that out there. Yeah, bet 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 the over in this game because uh, Oklahoma's defense is trash, mm-hmm. absolute straight garbage. So you know what? I'm right there with you. I'm going Baylor as well. Look at that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, it's just this is the week, man. This I'm I'm feeling it. This is the week. Like you said, them losing to TCU might have been the best thing for them. Because mm-hmm. you look at a lot of teams that come off the rebound, especially this year. This has been a weird year. This just fits the narrative of this being a weird college football year and Oklahoma being a fraud. So I'm going Baylor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think this is going to be the game that we actually prove to the rest of the world that Oklahoma is a bunch of frauds. 100%. Um, all right, Michigan, Penn State. Anytime I I got I have to pick uh, the game that my team's playing, I got to pick my team. I fully believe, and I I'll get to it um, whenever I do my Penn State talk at the end. I fully believe that we actually will be the better team on Saturday. I actually believe that because we're a better team than six and three, and our guys know that. And Harbaugh's going to Harbaugh, man. Harbaugh is just going to Harbaugh like he always does. And we're playing at home. Well, here's my counter to that is that you're playing a complete team. That's the okay. problem. If you were playing, if you were playing an incomplete team, then you would, then you'd clearly win this game. But, but you're playing a complete team. See, I so disagree clearly, with that. I disagree so, with that. So, clear, so clearly, clearly, the smart play would be to go with the complete team in this case, which I will. I will pick Michigan. Also because I fully believe that Harbaugh is going to have so much, like, <laughs> have so much pressure on him to make sure that he wins these next two games before he gets destroyed against Ohio State in our yearly tradition on that one that I think he is going to do everything in his power to make sure that he comes out of this weekend with a win. I see your point, but I don't buy it because <laughs> there's just, there. I feel something. I feel like I just, I feel it this week and may, that's just the optimist in me. Um, probably. Is it possible that the college football gods are mad, would be mad at Michigan for being ahead mm-hmm. of Michigan state and therefore they're going to get smacked back down? Very, that's a very big possibility. I do, like I said, I just think Harbaugh is. I relish. I just relish every time Harbaugh blows it. It is the best feeling in the world, and 
I think I've said this before. Yeah, sure. I'm always nervous going into Ohio State. It's probably the biggest game of the year for us, year in, year out. And we all, we usually right. give them a pretty decent game for the most part. We give them a decent game. Um, I'm way more invested in Penn State, Michigan every year because I hate Michigan that much. And I love seeing Harbaugh just flail. He hasn't finished above third in the Big Ten East since he's been in Michigan. Think about that. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. If there was ever a time for – if there was ever a time to get all the hopes up for all the Maize and Blue fans to just have the massive letdown that occurs against Ohio State that we know that is going to happen every single year, this is the game for it to get that emotion back up. Uh, that That is true. However, there's nothing quite – and I've gone through it. There's nothing quite like there's no bigger deflation than losing to a team you think you should beat before you get to your big game. Right. I, I.e. Penn State against Minnesota in twenty nineteen. So oh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that out there. All right. That's Pitt, fair. Pitt UNC. UNC's coming off a very emotional win, and I think Pitt is just I think they're kind of back to being what they should be. And now they were playing Duke, a bad team, but I do think the Pitt wins this game pretty handily. So like I said before, uh, UNC is always the game that scares me because somehow, some way, it just gets out of hand, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, Sam Howell did beat them when he was a freshman the previ- when he was a freshman at Pitt, so I have history to keep that in the back of my mind on that one. However, I don't see North Carolina – being able to pull off the magic that they did this past weekend yep. at home against Wake Forest when they needed that to get their national recognition back, and I just think Kenny Pickett's on a roll right now. Yep. So I'm going with I'm going with my Panthers. I have to. Yep. I mean that's the thing you can't pick against your team. I'm going to pick Penn State every 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 time, and which you justifiably have to, which yep. I get. Yep. But I mean I, that's the thing. I I do think that that's the right pick. Um, Purdue, Ohio State. Purdue is they've been on a tear against great teams, but the thing you gotta remember, every time they pull off something like that, they're at home. Mm-hmm. Ohio State's I do think that Purdue puts up a fight. I don't think that it's gonna happen. Give me Ohio State. Yeah, I'm gonna go Ohio State with you too. I'm a big believer that there is magic down there in West Lafayette, Indiana. But when they go on the road and they're playing elite level competition, I don't even consider Ohio State that great this year, honestly. Mm-hmm. But I I gotta lean towards Ohio State in this case because again, they gotta build that resume until until yep. everything just goes to the shit show. So yep. yeah, give me Ohio State. Hundred percent. I just I I don't think Ohio State's gonna be fooled going into Purdue. That's my thing is like, I think Michigan State did that. Iowa did that. That's why Purdue did it. And that's why Purdue was able to pull it off and they were at home. They don't have that this week. So I do Absolutely. think Purdue's good. They're they're definitely a decent team. I Just not this week. Um, A&M, Ole Miss. I'm going A&M here just because as much as I want to love Lane Kiffin and Matt Corral, their offense just has not been up to the standard that they set, the expectations that they set. I'm going a and because their A&M's defense is just so fucking good. And Ole Miss, everyone thinks bet on Ole Miss over. They haven't hit on the over very often. So I firmly believe that A&M is kind of on a roll right now, and Ole, Miss is, Ole Miss's defense is garbage. And I... The only way to rattle Zach Calzada is to have an elite defense, and Ole Miss does not have that. So I'm going going with the Aggies. Ole Miss had three interceptions last weekend against Malik Willis and Liberty. Do not let that fool you. Yep. This is not that great of a defense to go up against, and A&M has to be motivated because they realize there is blood in the water. If Alabama loses, they mm-hmm. have a clear-cut path to Atlanta. I'm going a m as well. They yep. need to continue to keep this streak going in order to have the clearest of chances because if they – hey, Bama plays Auburn on the road this year mm-hmm. in the Iron Bowl. 
magic can happen whenever you want to see it if you it yep. must 100 percent. it happens all the time even against bad auburn teams you never know mm. you know if they're playing at home you never know it's 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 like i i've made this comparison before auburn and penn state i think are very alike in a lot of ways home field advantage mm. is one of them just for whatever reason auburn just does weird shit at home i don't know what it is mm. but they just do mm-hmm. um and i'll get to that pick here at the end here but um nc state wake forest I'm going Wake Forest here, rebound win, um, just because I think that offense is so explosive, and NC State just isn't as explosive. They have a great defense, but I think Wake Forest pulls this one out. It's a toss-up for me. It's a close game, but... It's very much a toss-up toss up in my case, too. However... I am going to stay consistent with what I said before, and I'm going to go with NC State. I think NC State, talent-wise, is a better team. I I do think Wake Forest has the edge, though, because Wake Forest has killed it this year, and I would not be shocked if there might be a little bit of hangover from that loss against North Carolina. So that's why I think NC Mm. State will capitalize, because I trust their ability to slow down the game and play great defense. That's fair. It's going to be, I think it's going to be close. I'm thinking like a, either way, whoever wins, I, I think it'll probably be like a 35, 32 or 35, 31. Yeah. I'm not, game. I'm not expecting a blowout in any way. Yep. hundred percent. Um, NC State has proven me wrong this year already. So like this one, it was a tough one for me. Definitely a tough one. I do think Sam Hartman is really fucking good. So, mm-hmm. um, Mississippi State, Auburn. This one was so hard for me to pick because, like I said before, like I think Mississippi State is a better team than they show on paper. Now, I don't think they're an amazing team. They're not quite there yet. Leach is starting to work his magic a little bit. Um, however, Auburn does weird shit at home, so I'm gonna go. Um, Auburn and Bonex just do weird shit at home, so I'm gonna go Auburn. The gut pick. It's just a gut pick, and I could be very wrong. So, yeah, this is also a toss up for me. I feel like they're both very similar in this case, but I think the advantage in this case has to go with the fact that Bonix is not on the road. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, yeah. So I got, I got to go War Eagle in this case just because yep. I feel like, I feel like after the letdown they had last week, they're yep. going to have to rebound in some yep. sort of way to keep anything alive for them. Especially at home. And Mississippi State, I mean, Will Rogers, he's playing great football down at Mississippi State. He's one of the top, like, statistically, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Not many people realize that. But but that's a but that's every single Mike Leach run offense. That is true. Fairness, yeah, that's, good. that's a good point. Um, all right. So we're going to go to Don't Tell My Bookie. I hit two out of three on my parlay last week, and – I'm a stubborn son of a bitch, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna keep trying to hit it while I can. I'm um, just trying to keep riding it while I can. So UTSA versus Southern Miss, it's a big line, but UTSA is so good against the spread. I'm going UTSA minus 33 is uh, my first leg. I'm fading Kansas every week, and Texas's offense is so good, so I'm gonna go uh, Texas covering at minus 33 and a half. One thing, and I've talked about it on the show before, but it's one of those things that no one really talks about. Syracuse is the best team against spread in the country. I will ride them until they prove me otherwise. Give me Syracuse plus three. And because it was so tasty, because the line is just not that high, and both offenses are pretty good if they if they're not, if they have a good day. Going with the over sixty two and a half on Oklahoma versus Baylor. Greg, what do you think about those? So I love the Texas covering uh, Kansas because Kansas is just dog shit everywhere. Unless, of course, if they're playing Oklahoma, then it's actually a close game because Oklahoma is a bunch of frauds, as we proved that one. Um, The Oklahoma-Baylor game, I mean, I even said before that I would take the over in this game because it's just going to be just a a, a mess (laughs) with regards to just points all over the place. The Syracuse Louisville one scares me a little bit. I actually did not know about Syracuse being uh being eight the best team in the country. Eight and one. Eight and one against really? the spread. Vegas severely undervalues Syracuse. Severely. 
I think it's because I don't know if it's because Dino Babers just doesn't have a team that impresses you from week to week, but from a betting standpoint, hell, you can't mm-hmm. go wrong against it though. That's not mm-hmm. bad. I am a little nervous because Louisville at home, I would not be surprised if Malink Cunningham somehow finds a way to do something ridiculous for this game. Mm-hmm. But but I agree. I think Syracuse is a better team than some people are giving them credit to. So yep. I think they'll keep it close. 100%. Yeah, I just so I will say I the first line I saw in this game was one and a half. That scared me. Three, right. I feel a little a little better about. So um, I've already locked it in. So I'm going Syracuse plus three. One and a half is a little eh, a little too close. I Syracuse. It's just it's so weird how they do it. They just somehow they somehow get it every game. I don't know what, and it's very close. It's always super close, but they get it every game and ride them mm. till they prove me otherwise. Um, I, I almost threw Clemson in there again because I was fading Clemson hard against the spread all year because they, they had not hit against the spread. They were 0-7 against the spread for the first seven weeks. Really? Wow. Yep, and I, I faded That's them. Crazy. faded them for so long. Um, They fucked up my parlay this past weekend, and then the week, weekend before that uh. was was the one that really pissed me off. I had Florida State covering at 9.5. And I don't know if you saw it, but it was that fumble uh, on, the, on the oh, hook and ladder. Man. They, they <laughs> fucking covered. And I like after that, I was so mad that I was like, you know, fuck these guys. I'm going to keep fading them. And they just, they threw me wrong. So, uh, but, yeah. Hate to see it, man. Yeah. Hate to see it. I did saw that. I did see that, though. It was I was so hell. mad. I was with my girlfriend, and I, you know, and I was just like, I was devastated. It was right before the Penn State Ohio State game, and I was like, "I don't feel good at going into this Ohio State game now because, like, <laughs> that was my bet. You know, like I that was my I right. felt I felt so good about it, and it would have fucking hit. Literally, the entire nation was pissed at Clemson for doing that because, like, everyone had yeah. Florida State covering. But all right, <laughs> all right, Max and Bronson time. Check the bio. I fixed the game between Kentucky and Miami of Ohio. All right. Felt so good. That felt so good. Oh, so good. Action, baby. Gre- Greg, you said you don't watch a ton of action? Not not too much cuz it's always on it's always on Tuesdays or Wednesdays and uh Tuesdays I I have a I have a show I have to do unfortunately. So that uh that takes my time away from that. But if if there is some time to be able to enjoy some to enjoy some college football, you can't go wrong with Maction, especially with a league that has a pirate flag as their actual like mm-hmm. as their actual like insignia, which is yep. badass yep. together. Yep. Mac is just it's chaos and I love it. It's so hard to pick. And I'm I put the lock of the week on here for the bet. Not even close to hitting that. <laughs> Bowling Green's down. <laughs> 42 to 10 going halfway through the third. So let's say stage a big comeback. I felt good about it. Which is possible. Which is possible. Well, that's, you never really know with the Mac though. That's, Bowling Green's really good against spread and that's kind of why I picked it. But betting the Mac is just fucking impossible. You, you just, you can't, you can't pick the right thing. Um, the video was from uh, last night's game, Akron, Western Michigan. This kicker nailed a field goal late in the fourth quarter, and it is, it's like some Pat McAfee shit. Look at this. Look at this. Mm. Just ice in his veins. Ice in his veins. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, and then the, the, the dap with the yep. coach is just, yeah. whoo. Yeah, no, that, uh, that, that feels good when you when you get a when you get a coach in on on your celebrations and stuff and there's no there's no flagging there's no taunting involved with any of this like that that's when that's when it feels good that's yep. when that's when it's like that's when it's wholesome right there yep. I love me some college fo- I love me some college football where the coaches can be just as much of degenerates as the kids they are around oh a hundred percent Lane that's why I love Lane Kiffin I don't buy him as a coach necessarily necessarily but I love Lane Kiffin because he just gets into yeah. it. Um. All right. Don't care much for the human being, Lane Kiffin, but I at least yep. respect his ability to have fun as a coach. Absolutely. Um. All right. It's time. I don't have the pit vipers with me, or else I would put those on. Honestly, I haven't deserved the pit vipers after this year, so I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm just gonna keep those off. Um. 
Yeah. Time for Penn State talk. Do your thing, bud. All right, Jimbo. We're coming for those khakis, boy. We're coming for those khakis. Like I've said already in this show, this is a bigger game for me and probably a lot of Penn State fans. It's a bigger deal than Penn State, Ohio State every year because Penn State or Michigan fans are just the fucking worst. The sense of entitlement on those pieces of shit are just, it's just off the charts. My boys are much better than the six and three record that they show. Just because Sean Clifford got hurt, I firmly believe that we would would have rolled against Iowa. We were, we were until Clifford got hurt. He was still hurt against Illinois. I just there's no game that I get up for more than Michigan. And you know what? It's at home. I know it's a noon game. But hey, we've done it already this year against Wisconsin. It's a noon game in Happy Valley. It's a whiteout. I just want to embarrass the fuck out of Jimbo. That guy is the biggest fraud in college football, and I relish every time that he loses. I don't know what time it is, but Michigan still sucks. Like I said, we're coming for you, Jimbo. Let's fucking go. How was that, Greg? That that was beautiful. I, I feel inspired that. right now. I appreciate and I, that. And listen... Jim Harbaugh is has to be feeling the immense amount of pressure that he's mm-hmm. under right now. Mm-hmm. He has yep. to. If he, it, I cannot imagine he survives the season if they don't. I don't even know if if Jim Harbaugh finishes the season with ten wins, but yet they still get destroyed by Ohio State. He still is probably out of a job. Yeah, it's wild. Like, and it's. Because those assholes up in Ann Arbor set such high expectations for him. It, Unrealistic, man. Unrealistic. Unrealistic. You're playing. It, that's the thing. Dude, the best record he has against a legit team in his division is against Penn State. It's still only 3-3. Three and three. He's 3-4 three and four against Michigan State. 0-6 and six or 7 against Ohio State. He's just... Oh, yeah. He hasn't been Ohio State. He's just not good in big games, and... On paper, it might not look like a huge game, but I'm telling you, this is the game. This is a letdown game. They went, they went out and blew out Indiana. This is a game that they're looking past right now. I'm, I'm telling you. I would not be shocked because I bet you they got all their frustration out on Indiana. Yep. They're feeling themselves because they're above Michigan State, even though they don't deserve to be. Mm-hmm. So they are clear. They're clearly prone. For a situation to occur where a team might sneak up on them, a team who is sneakily better than people are giving them credit for. Yep. So there's a very real chance that something could happen in this case. Yep. And I don't I don't trust that Michigan offense. Nope. I don't. Absolutely I just think Indiana not. Yeah. So I would much rather take my chances against a very good defense that you guys have. Mm-hmm. So there's a very good chance that something like this happens. However, I have to say because I picked Michigan. I still believe they are not going to be in a situation where they go to Ohio State, and I don't think they necessarily will lose another game because there is so much pressure on that team to make sure that they do it. But if there's going to be a team that's going to do it, Penn State has the best chance. I I completely agree. It like, like I've said before, there there have been. I know the feeling because you think that you're. The amount of times it's happened to me as a Penn State fan is fucking unreal. Um, I think it was 2017. We were up big against Ohio State. Let them come back and win. And we just, we we keep, you know, after that game, we were like, you know what? We're fine. It's okay. We can still run the table. Maybe some shit happens. Go out the next week and lose to Michigan State. Because we're looking past it. We're looking past it. It happens all the time. I've done it. Right now we're not we're not looking past Michigan. They might be looking past us right now because no one's really giving us credit. And like I said, the defense and like you said, the defense is legitimate, and I do think that Clifford at home can do some pretty good things if he's healthy, which right now he should be. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I've just ever since 
I remember it was the first year that I really got into Penn State football, 2005. It was the year that we were, I think we were 9-0 and going into the Michigan game. Lloyd Carr had some sort of under-the-table deal. It had to have been because the refs added time onto the clock after time expired. The next play, fucking Mario Manham just stomped stomped on our hearts and we ended up we went to the orange bowl but we would have gone undefeated otherwise we got cheated out I of remember the game that year i remember we got I'm, cheated and ever since then i cannot stand michigan i remember that that was the michael robinson team yep that, that was a magical year that was a, it was that's why i got into it and like my parents were already into it and i was already kind of watching that was the year that really like got me into it and michigan fucking stole it from us clowns i hate them oh my god i hate them like i I wish i could say i hate ohio state more but i just don't because like they're just over year in year out they just have more talent on the roster period so i can only hate them so much like am i jealous of them yeah but i fucking hate michigan like you yeah and i i'm the same way with ohio state you would think they would have had some falling off with ryan day taking over but they just didn't so yep. that just shows that ohio state had a good pipeline to be able to work with michigan it's just <laughs> michigan you you get an ad who was the original founder of domino's pizza to bring in <laughs> a big name and it just did not work out at all right yep. now because it's kind of like the opposite of nebraska in that sense you could be happy with nine and four ten mm-hmm. and three Maybe the occasional 11 and two, nothing wrong with that, but you yep. gotta have to have bigger expectations and therefore yep. you ruin it. Yep. You ruin it. Yep. At the very least, I can say the Penn State has a Big Ten championship. I'm not saying that we're the program to beat in the Big Ten because clearly we're not, but at the very least, we're better than fucking Michigan. <laughs> that, that at least <laughs> lets me sleep soundly at night. So, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. James Franklin ain't gonna get ain't gonna get fired for something like for not being able to beat Ohio State because at least you did beat Ohio State. I don't think that's the thing. I don't think James Franklin is even close to getting fired. Not even close. No, I agree. He's not, even, not close. even close. Yeah. I've had the I've I've talked about it with Deke already, but like he he might leave and it's because Penn State is hesitant to give him the resources, not the pay, not the not the pay. Or the salary bump or anything like that. It's look at what Kirby Smart is doing down in Georgia. Right. He won the battle where he's saying we don't have the resources that Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State have. We need to dump more money into the football program. Period. We need facilities. We need to be able to keep our coaches. All that. James Franklin. Right now, it sounds like he's fighting that battle, and I'm waiting to see if he wins. Um, it's. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be intrigued to see if he actually, if he were to leave, like what school would be even close to off or something like that. It would have to be USC is the only other school that I could think LSU of that would be able to do. Would be that. the one that I was LS, thinking of. LSU, that's true. Yep. I don't, he, he doesn't strike me as the type of coach that would want to be in the South, if that makes sense. I could see that. I could see him kind of fitting in at LSU or USC. Um, but having said that, what Franklin loves. He loves the fans. I will say that about him. He loves the and USC just doesn't get that. LSU does. LSU has the rabid fans that Penn State has. They have the atmosphere that Penn State has. Right. That's why I'm thinking it would be a better fit for him down there. Will it happen? I don't know. It sounds like he's he he has considered leaving, and it's more like, hey, I've done a most of what I can here, unless you guys help me out a little bit. That's my argument. I don't know if that's actually what's going on behind the scenes, but that's that's the theory going on and going around right mm-hmm. now. So, um, well, Greg, I appreciate you coming on. Of course, man. Of course. Definitely a more analytical episode than if I had Deke on. But you know, hey, it's a it's a it's a nice change of pace because. It, me and D, we we cut it up and just bullshit a lot, and I've turned him yeah. into a college football fan, which I'm I'm very proud of, because he was an NFL guy through and through. But yeah, um, it was a nice change of pace. I I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I'm not surprised that it's it was more analytical because people always said that like, or at least Deke and I have always claimed that I am the glue, he is the glitter. 
Mm -hmm. So it kind of, it kind of makes sense that there was as much bantering back and forth, but as long as I can at least impart some sort of wisdom on the masses, then I gladly will. And I would also like to say that Deke became a bigger NFL draft fan because of myself. Mm -hmm. So I would like to say that we both hand in hand made Deke a better fan of college football. I agree. I agree. Yeah. He's apparently he's been really into it this year. He's, he's been watching a ton of games and stuff. So yeah, he didn't really know. He, you could tell he had the base, the baseline knowledge. Like okay, this is what I see on on ESPN. This is the feeling I get from all these all these programs. But like, it sounds like he's he's getting pretty into it. So, I'm. I mean, and this is my bread and butter. So like, I'm I'm happy yeah. that I was able to, you know. It, but he did tell me when he told me that you could step in tonight. I was like, oh, that's a no brainer. He actually knows what he's talking about. So, thank you. I, yeah. I have a mind like no other obviously wow okay all right all right uh <laughs> go check out uh two beers deep on thursdays um and the rankings court on tuesdays um which greg is co-hosting both um go check out our november page go donate go drink some cores greg i know you're drinking probably water right now but i'm gonna cheers you anyway so cheers buddy cheers to that Appreciate it. Uh, I will see. Yep, no problem. I will see all of you when this drops later tonight on Twitch for a fine episode of Two Beers Deep. Absolutely. Peace, guys.